Hi everybody! In this video, I want to show you how to create view filters with Revit API. You'll see a clip from a much longer video from my Learn Revit API course, where I shared all the aspects about view filters. But in this specific clip, you will learn how to create view filters with Revit API. I hope you'll find it useful and you'll automate some of your view filters in your projects. Now, let's dive straight into the code. Now we're gonna go to more fun example, because finally we're gonna have a look, how do we create parameter filter? First of all, we're gonna create one filter and then we're gonna create many filters based on parameter value, because first you need to understand how to make one at least. Let's make some space. All right, we're gonna start this step by creating a transaction. We're gonna start and commit it and we're gonna start creating everything in between. First of all, we need to define our new filter name. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it EF new filter. We also might want to put it before the transaction start because sometimes you already have your filter existing. In these cases, let's just get all our parameter filters and get all their names. So just gonna write here, if this new filter name, not in existing parameter filter names, then we're gonna start a transaction and make some changes. Now, similar to what we did in the previous step, looking at the view filter and trying to read its values, now we need to create them. And to be honest, it's gonna be much simpler than reading them. We need to create our category. We need to create a few rules. Then we need to convert rules into a, a filter. And then we just need to apply all of this to the view and maybe add overrides. Overall, we've already covered all the steps, but let's have a look how to do this. First of all, we're gonna create our categories and should be a list of element ID. Inside of it, we're gonna add category of element ID built-in category and in my case i'm just gonna add walls you could add here also windows or something else but be aware when you use mini categories you also have to use the correct parameters for your filters because it will not allow you to use parameters which do not apply to all your kind of categories that you selected we're just going to keep it simple let's make here a comment select view filter category then we're going to add some rules in here. Rule number one is going to be about wall function. You know this type parameter in your walls, which says, is it interior, exterior, or whatever kind of wall it is. This is what we're going to check. So we're going to create our parameter value provider, and inside we need an element ID of a built-in parameter. It's going to be element ID, built-in parameter, and in this case it's called function parameter. All right, we have our PVP, we're ready to create our rule. There are two ways to create it. Now let's break it down one by one. The first way, we need to decide what kind of rule we want to use. In this case, I know that it's going to be filter integer rule. Should be that one. Inside it takes PVP. Then it's going to take an evaluator. I'm going to use filter numeric equals. And then we need the integer value itself. In this case, it has to be integer from wall function. And in here, we need to select the options. I know that looks like a weird example, but this is what happens when you have to select them from uh, enumeration. This is how it works, because you will see that it's an integer parameter. We could also do it differently. I know that many people prefer use the second method. I find the first one more convenient for me. Alternatively, we can use parameter filter rule factory. In there, there is create Equal rule, less rule, contains rule, greater rule, ends rule, any of this. I'm going to take equals rule. First one is parameter. So we need this element ID of a parameter, which is right here. And the second one is going to be the value, which is going to be right here. These two are exactly the same results, but you do it differently. Either you take directly filter integer rule, or you can use this parameter filter rule factory, which kind of simplifies it, but for me, I don't know. I like to use this one more. But it's up to you which one you decide to go with. I'm going to comment out the second one. We have our rule number one. Let's also make second rule. And it's just going to be something like comments equals xxx. And here again, we need our PVP. It's going to be parameter, value provider, element ID and built-in parameter, and this time it's going to be all model instance comments parameter. 
And for the rule number two, I need to use filter string rule because this is the storage type of my parameter. Inside needs PVP, needs evaluator, filter string contains, and then the value itself. Also, if you are an older version of Revit, like Revit, I think 2021, you would also need to put here true or false for case sensitivity. In my case, I don't need it. Let's write here Revit API 2021 needs or argument boolean. Right, we have our rule number one, we have our rule number two. Now we need to combine our rules. It's only necessary if you have more than one, obviously. If you had only one, you could use different constructor. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to paste it because the rules are going to be a list of filter rules and inside provide rule one and two. And notice that it should be inside of a list inside of parentheses. I'm going to do it like this. I think it might crash. So make sure there's also a list. Now we can create an element parameter filter parameter element filter, however it's called. I'm gonna call it wall filter and it's gonna be element parameter filter. In this case is gonna take rules, but also if you would only have rule one or rule two, you could just provide here rule one or rule two. Just select one of them. In this case, it's multiple. I'm gonna use that one and comment out the first. All right, and now we are ready to create this view filter. This is how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna write view filter equals parameter filter element create and inside we need four arguments it also could be less but in our case we need four we're gonna provide our document then we need the name which is our new filter name then we need our categories and lastly optionally we can also provide element filter in this case i want to take all filter this one will already set all the rules which we define right here. Rule number two, rule number one, because we want to filter our elements correctly. All right, this will create us a view filter. I'm also going to paste here so we can add some overrides as well. Create color blue, we create our override settings, we set the line, we set the weight, we set transparency. And here we apply it to the view. We take our active view, we add the filter to the active view, and also inside the active view, we set filter overrides. You already know all these steps. Now, let's go and have a look. Inside, you can see these are all my filters I have at the moment. So when I'm gonna click on it, it's supposed to create a brand new filter, which was something like EF new filter and add it here. I got an error saying that filtered numeric rule evaluator and I got an error on line 279, something about filter evaluator. Let's have a look. It's going to be right here. For what I can see, I think I need to call this one. It's not just the name of the class, it's the kind of calling of the class. Let's try it again. I'm going to click here and I'm pretty sure this time it's going to work. Okay, it went through. Let's go to filters and here's our new filter. We can already see some kind of overrides that we added in the last moment. And if we open it inside, you can see that here are our rules. We have our function, which is equals to exterior and our comments, which contains XXX. Another thing, I don't know why it becomes hosted right here, and how to make it differently. I did not have time anymore to kind of solve this. However, I know that if I'm gonna come in here and instead of providing multiple rules I'm just gonna provide rule number one for example then it's gonna be just fine I'm gonna cancel it I'm gonna run it again and now when I'm gonna go to filters you'll notice that this time it works perfectly there is just only one parameter here we don't have to provide a list of parameters we can provide just one rule directly overall it's gonna give you exactly the same results but I know that some of you Will, will not like how it looks, but this is what I got for now. All right, once more. Here, we can either provide as a rule number one, or we can provide a list of rules, like I showed you before. All right, and now you know how to create view filters with Revit API, but I want you to practice a little bit more. I want you to get all your wall types in your project and create view filter for each one of them as an exercise. This will teach you how to create view filters based on parameter values, 
and if you need help, I'll show you a code snippet on the screen that will do that. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be in 3, 2, 1, and right there is the code that you can use. Pause the video to read it. And if you want to learn Revit API in the best way possible, following a step-by-step -step system that will teach you everything that you need to know, make sure that you check learnratapi.com. This course already has 13 hours of content across 50 lessons. Each lesson has its own summary, Discord chat to discuss in the community, and also I keep adding more content. There are already 300 happy students inside the course, and this number keeps growing. So I hope to see you inside the course. But either way, I wish you happy coding, and I hope to see you in the next videos as well. Goodbye.